It's a critical time of year for Roy. His high maintenance falcons and hawks have young and can't be disturbed. The peacocks are so preoccupied with love and shaking those tail feathers, they wouldn't know if a fox was sitting right behind them licking its lips. And that's a very real worry as a Charlie is coming here every night between 10 o'clock and 10.30. The worrying part for me, that if a fox goes round at the moment, one, we've got all the peacocks nesting and obviously like pheasants and partridge, they're a ground nesting bird. But more importantly, and we're getting a serenade from the peacocks, they know what we're up to. More importantly, with the birds of prey, at the moment, again, is a very, very dangerous time to have a fox running around the garden because they're all sitting on eggs or sitting on young. And although the fox can't get into the aviaries, all the aviaries are fox proof, it's only got to start scratching at the doors, jump, or jump on top, cause disturbance of an evening or into the night and then one of the birds could come off their eggs or come off their young and that will leave them completely unprotected from the weather and it's been getting bitterly cold still at night even though we're in June. Fingers crossed this fox will stick pretty much to the timings that we've seen it at so around about 10, 10.30. So we're going to head up there, it's coming on for about half past nine now, hopefully we won't have too long to wait. Because Roy is shooting down onto the fox he wants to make sure he's going to be hitting the right spot. Tony Hart, watch out. Yes. First of all, he needs to put some bait out in the optimum spot. It should be pick and mix and not Twix. And what we're going to use is a little bit of cat food. And that's purely and simply because it's in small pieces, small chunks. So the fox should just have a, a bit of a, a, um, a search about picking up the little bits. If you put a rabbit carcass or something like that out, then it's just as likely to pick that up and run off with it. So if we just scatter this about, then uh, hopefully it'll stay around long enough to give us a shot. On its evening prowl, the fox also hassles the magpies in the Larsen Trap. They are part of its routine. Foxes are opportunists. All it takes is a loose latch and the fox will be in like Flynn. It's a mistake that many poultry owners make. They don't think they have fox issues until it's too late. What the fox will do around his territory is he will go around and check all the likely food sources. So that's what he's doing with the magpies and with the birds at the moment. It, you just need to make one mistake, leave a door open, leave a door ajar, and the fox will uh, make hay whilst the sun's shining. Right, let's take the shot. Yeah, about an inch and a half low. So I'll just raise up a little bit from there, and we should be spot on. It's only 15 or so yards, but the easy ones are sometimes the ones that surprise. He's happy with the short range, but to cover all scenarios, Roy is setting up two rifles. Just to make sure that we've got belt and braces coverage because there's nothing worse than being set up and having a fox get away because it's just a little bit too far away and I don't really like taking shots too far with a 2-2 on foxes so I've brought the big rifle up as well we're just setting, setting it up with the Nightmaster torch on top like so because we've got a couple of big fields out to the left of the building and the foxes very often hunt the rabbits just out in the paddocks here. So if the fox does appear out there and it's too far for me to take with the 2-2, then we've got set up with this. So we've got this 2-4-3 there and waiting. We're all ready and we have our doubts that this is going to work. Do not fear, Roy is here. 10 o'clock comes and so does our fox. Don't you love it when the plan comes together? We'd literally been here no more than 10 minutes. Well, I suppose 10, 15 minutes with getting set up. And the magpies gave us a warning. I was looking out there, hadn't seen it. Magpies started chipping up. And sure enough, arrived on cue. We're just making its way into the cat food and presented a perfect headshot. Let's have a closer inspection. There we go, superb. Let's see what we are. Oh, wow. That's not what I expected there. So uh, bearing in mind that is a tiny, tiny little fox, I thought that was going to be a vixen. But as you can see, it is most definitely a dog. So that's a really, really tiny little fella. But uh, there we go. There we go. So you can see there, there's the shot. Absolutely spot on in the top of the head. 
And as he came in, I just waited for him to look. And again, I took my time. He wasn't bothered. He hadn't heard us. I was just moving the rifle very slowly up onto the sandbag. I was just about to take the shot and he moved on. And then he looked up again. I put the crosshairs just above him because obviously where we tested it beforehand, we knew that it was shooting about an inch, inch and a half low. So I just put the crosshairs just on the top of his head and that just plonked in there absolutely perfectly. I'm so pleased that we've accounted for that one and isn't it often the way because we're away clearing up foxes for other people. We very often neglect what's on our doorstep. It's been one of the simplest foxing jobs ever. Dry, warm and foxes coming on cue. It's soft foxing, but we love it.